All right, Eric, you want to go ahead and come in? Eric has something. We got something to talk about in reference to taxes. All right. Um, yeah. First, uh, happy holidays to everyone. Um, yeah. We, the, the other day, um, you had a video on the woman talking about social security. Um, they might remember, remember this woman, we, we won't play it again, but she was talking about how, um, how crazy it is the way, um, if things happen with social security and how they have the, um, the way social security is funded is it's this, um, I would, I would play it again, Eric, because not everybody may have seen that since it was an end scene. Yeah. Let's hit it. On screen. 12% of the money that is earned goes into social security. So in recent years, we have been putting in about two point four trillion dollars worth of money into the social security trust now the u.s government uh pays out about 1.4 trillion dollars in benefits from social security so there is typically a surplus now when i digged a little deeper there has always been a surplus in social security there's always been extra money after we all pay in at the end of the year or whatever or throughout the year now Congress decided to borrow money from Social Security to the tune of over $2 trillion. They borrowed the money from Social Security. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, that's good. They borrowed the money because they borrowed the money and they also have to pay interest from borrowing the money. So it'd be about $100, $150 million worth of interest from the money that Congress borrowed from the Social Security. Here is why I'm losing my mind. How is Congress going to pay back the $2 trillion that they took from Social Security? Because Congress, <laughs> y'all see where I'm going with this? Congress, the money that Congress has is our tax dollars from our property taxes, our income taxes, sale taxes, all that shit. So basically, Congress is going to take the tax paying money of the American people to pay back the money they borrowed from the American people and then charge the American people the interest <laughs> to pay with the money they borrowed. Yeah, so it's it's perfectly you know you know reasonable to to look at this and be like and be like what what the heck is is going on here, and so what what it, what it made me think of is that I, I've been meaning for some time to um to to write up to post a page about this whole concept of of, of tax dollars, and it's not it's not to say that like she's wrong to to feel this way and to say you know this doesn't make any sense, but I think it's important to to understand, and this is what MMT gets into it, is as far as you know how appropriations are generated, how um, how this whole system with the money works and how crazy it is, this whole idea of borrowing from the Social Security trust fund yep. and 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 then paying it back in interest and all this stuff. So so what I so what I wrote up here and posted to my old um, Eric T. Red site is why I'll click and do it. Here we go. Why you should avoid using the phrase taxpayer dollars. And so I got three big reasons for that. Just, just in that, just, just talking about that phrase itself, right? Um, the first thing is it's simply incorrect as far as like talking about, you know, things being paid for by my taxpayer dollars or your taxpayer dollars. At the federal government, when you're talking about Congress, the money is simply created. They do lit literally have a money tree where they can just do appropriations and the money is created. It's, uh, it's it used to be printed. It's it's generated in computers now at the Fed, and it's created as needed. The taxes part of it is you do you know you do need to cycle the money back in, and when your taxes are paid and they go into the federal government, those collected tax dollars are literally just deleted from the system, and it's not you know the it isn't 
carry, you know, it isn't like the money goes from one thing to another. It is literally separate. The second big point, it obscures the, the real purpose of taxes. And the real purpose of taxes are you do have to cycle the month, those dollars back out of the system. If you didn't do that, then it, you would get inflation. You would get a runaway inflation. You can't just print money and not have it go back in. But when you but when you talk about it, this taxpayer dollars concept, it it gets into thinking that those dollars are paying for the programs. And when you have that kind of thinking, then rich people, the people who have a lot of money, and even in when you get into the billionaires, it gets into this thinking that well, they're they're paying for things, right? Those are how are we going to pay for things if we don't have billionaires paying for things? And our thinking should be the opposite. The, this money it needs to be cycled back in, and the fact that the rich and the billionaires have all this money means that they should be paying more taxes because they got the money, and yep. it's, and it's it's about wealth inequality and the whole bit. And then the third one is this whole taxpayer dollars part of it. Isn't that slow area leads to the scarcity and deficit mentality, and so. They, they, they always love to use, you know, the federal debt as the big scaremonger thing. You know what I'm saying? The federal debt is not the frightening specter it is made out to be. It is simply an accounting total. It's really all it is, right? You have this much in appropriations. You have this much in, in taxes coming in. Now, in a general way, you need to, you know, think about the balance and, and how those things come in. But in, in a, um, but in a, um, but it's not a, a specific thing. Like it's not, um, it's not, you know, you have to have this money come in. It's not like, it's not like the old days when, um, when, do you remember Fort, uh, Fort Knox? Did you ever hear of Fort Knox? So Fort yeah. Knox used to be where they held the gold. Yep. And, it, and back before Nixon took us off the gold standard, the, the dollar was literally backed by gold. And, and they had this Fort Knox that would that at least that was the, the what they said was it was all full of the gold that was owned by the U.S. government. And so, you know, it's not like they have to go back to Fort Knox anymore and, and grab the gold out of there. Um, and so so then the big thing with this whole scarcity and deficit mentality, when when the wars and bailouts are funded, the deficit, they forget about it. Right? It's just, oh, we got to pay for this when that when healthcare and education and welfare things and all the stuff that the 99 percent need when that's proposed, then it becomes, oh, how are you going to pay for that? And, and the, the deficit, you know, the mentality and whatnot. And then I get into, you know, why is this important? You know, it, isn't this isn't this just semantics? And so federal spending and taxation there are incredibly powerful. The, the, the amount of money that they can put out there, um, you, you see it with what they fund and whatnot. You know, this is critical, important stuff. This is huge power. And so understanding how that operates and who's benefiting from it is really is critical if we're going to do, if we're all going to have nice things, right? If we're going to do good, positive things. And right now what we have is a system where Wall Street, the bankers and the billionaires, they understand how it works. You know, right. they're getting at, at that money and whatnot. And, you know, we in the, in the left and the 99%, I would argue, have to do a better job of, of understanding these things. And when you're out there, if you're out there saying, you know, I don't want my taxpayer dollars paying for war, well, you're not really understanding, you know, how this all really works because it, it doesn't matter if you pay taxes or not. They don't care. The government doesn't care. The bankers, they don't care. They, they're they going to generate their money just because they can. And then, you know, if we're not going to say taxpayer dollars, then, then what should we say? And I would pose that good alternatives are, are federal dollars. You can say, you can talk about it as our money and, or you can talk about it as government spending. But the big thing is the money is a tool. It's a tool of the government, which is supposed to belong and be run for the benefit of all of us. And it, it, it's our money. Uh, those dollars belong to all of us. Um, yeah. And and on the Social Security one, like the way the way that's run is here we can clear this off. The, the the way the Social Security program is run is is with the taking it out of the paychecks, right? We all get the FICA and these other taxes taken out, and it can be a lot, especially you know, especially if you're like a work you know work low wage worker. Um, and when they first proposed the system under Roosevelt, and whatnot, this is how they got it 
to go through is that they said, oh, well, it won't cost the government any money because it'll come out of people's paychecks. Right. And, you know, especially now at this point, it should just simply be funded. It should just be part of how government fund, you know, they can do that for war. They can do that for bailouts. You know, Social Security should just be funded. And you shouldn't have this nonsense of, you know, how much did you pay in? Or that's, that's how much you can get out. Well, here we go. Um, yeah, printer, money printer goes burr. <laughs> and, uh, I always like that one. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to hit that, especially the Social Security point in that, you know, it's all of a piece and we need to to get a good understanding of of how these, these things operate. MMT isn't is is isn't about like saying we should do things, it's about understanding how things work. And you know, and then you get into, you know, how do we fix that? And you know, we right. have this powerful, powerful instrument and the corruption and we need to demand better and have the solutions. All right. That's what I wanted to put out there. And it and it's on uh, my Eric Eric T Red site. If anyone wants to reference it. So when someone says tax dollars, you can say, well, well, look at this thing. They say like, like, why shouldn't I say tax dollars? Well, right. some reasons. <laughs> I put it in the chat for you guys too. So you can look at that. Look at cool. that site as well. Yeah. All right. It makes, happy, it makes a lot of sense. And happy holidays to everyone. We'll see, see you on the other side of them. <laughs>